I am Yanni Sumiko uh, of uh, Strings and Hammers Ensemble. Um, and it's nice to have composer Eduardo Costa Rodan, who wrote a piece for all of us called Pulsar, and it's in the CD Strings and Hammers. Um, so, can you tell us about the title Pulsar and um, what this piece is about? Okay, thank you, Yumi. Uh, hello, everyone. I, um, I, at the beginning when I thought about writing this this piece, I started thinking of I always need a kind of idea, so I got inspiration by uh, a neutron star, which is a pulsar. So actually, it's like um, very compressed um, uh, remains of a previous star that has. Uh, the material is really compressed and it's very um, dark material, but it has uh, uh, shining, it shines with um, certain uh, pulsation through, through the skies. And what you see from, from the sky is something that titillate, titillates and uh, has this um, vibration in light. So I took that uh, idea of uh, something that vibrates and creates a pulse that is not completely regular. Uh, and that's the the basis for the whole the whole work. So that's where they came, uh, where they came, uh, the title came from. From the point of view of the listener, I I uh, imagine that they would um, feel that there is this pulsation that, that is uh, constant, but at the same time, it's not completely the same all the time. And that translate translates into the use of a very subtle and very um, often changes of uh, meter that keep the, um, uh, the uh, 16th note as a common beat. But then the, the, the way I group them, sometimes it's in three, sometimes it's in fours and fives and six. So it, it, it means that the, the meter is changing uh, all the time. And if you add to that, uh, there's all the rhythms superimposed to that. Then I, I imagine that for the performance, uh, for you, uh, must have been kind of a bit of a challenge at some points, but I still think that from the point of view of the of the listener, I think they 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 get this sense of a very rich pulse uh, that you know when you see a star and you see the beams and you don't see a clear line, you see like um, little uh, beams here and there. So that's what I I was looking for. Hello, I'm Julia Keller, and I'm the double bassist in the group Strings and Hammers. And I wanted to ask uh, you, Eduardo, uh, how was the instrumentation of our trio and the percussion ensemble together inspiring and or challenging to you? Um, how did you handle this <laughs> instrumentation? <laughs> Well, it was a challenge, actually, as you say, because uh, for me, it was the first time I was writing such a big uh, ensemble. Uh, I mean, I didn't have to because you, uh, Bob uh, McCormick, didn't ask for a specific uh, uh, set. But uh, as I knew that there were um, a group of very talented um, musicians there, I decided to go for a big group. And that also gave me a lot of um, choices in terms of uh, orchestration. I, uh, I enjoy very much working with color and textures and sometimes um, creating new textures and new colors by mixing instruments that are close one to another. To another. And so I, I felt that I needed like a big group. <laughs> so in the end, I, I ended up with um, eight percussionists and um, obviously the Strings and Hammers trio. And uh, each of these uh, percussionists, they, are, they don't, not, they don't uh, play just one instrument. I mean, the, the set is quite, quite big. They use a lot of instruments there. So that gave me the, the option of creating new timbers and, and new combinations, which is uh, also the idea of the, of the, of the piece. That, has, that is um, to create a pulse that is not completely clear and not only in terms of uh, pulsation, but also in terms of uh, timber. So um, in a very, very um, uh, long part of the piece, uh, audiences won't know exactly what's, what's, what instruments are playing. 
because uh, they are um, mixing uh, uh, together um, so closely in, in register and rhythm that you can't really differentiate one from, from another. Hi, I'm Sini Virtanen and I play the violin in Strings and Hammers. And Eduardo, I would like to ask you, since we worked together already a couple of years before this project, what kind of effect does it have on your writing or the process of writing when you know the musicians you're writing for? Wow, uh, that's a very interesting question. I actually, I've, I don't think I've ever written for someone that I didn't know. I mean, probably, um, there are some people that I did, I, I don't know. I mean, I've written for big orchestras and obviously I don't know everyone, but it, that's the standard uh, uh, combination, you know, a, a, a symphonic band for, or concert band, for instance, uh, or a symphonic orchestra is kind of standard. But in terms of chamber music and in terms of uh, you uh, specifically, guys, I, um, because I already wrote uh, something for you, I think I, it's like when you write a script and, uh, for a film or a, play, a theater play, and you have the character in your mind. So when I was writing, I was kind of imagining and remembering when I saw you uh, perform uh, my previous piece that I wrote for you. Uh, obviously try not to uh, copy the same uh, writing, uh, being true to my, to my language and my style, but at the same time trying to uh, imagine uh, how would you do that? How would you or uh, Sini or Julia or Yumi play uh, certain certain uh, parts? And I think that helped, and I think it influenced me in the the way I I wrote. I saw that you are um, both of you, the three of you. I I thought they were very um, obviously very good musicians, but also yeah, you command a sense of. Uh, technicalities, uh, the way you, you, you um, relate to the instrument uh, demands, uh, sorry, shows um, a great um, skill. And I, I wasn't a, uh, afraid of writing, you know, um, difficult parts or, because I, I, I knew that they would sound very comfortable and very, you know, so that's an example, I think. And also at the same time, I, I uh, perceived that you were very subtle when you, when you needed to, and I wanted to explore, explode, uh, you say that, yeah, to use that uh, in, the, in the piece, those contrasts. So yeah, I think so that's, that, that's um, something that influenced me, definitely, yeah.